Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round 2. This time we have a Lila T60 on the black side of a very very nice game, as we'll see. Now, the tournament finished a couple of days ago, but here are the standings, the final standings. We saw these standings already on, in the previous video, but here they are again. Lila finished 3 points ahead of Stockfish and uh, T60 finished 3rd, which is uh, quite an amazing achievement in this strong field. And let's see now her game against Fire. As I mentioned uh, with the black pieces, we have e4, e5, and now knight f3, knight c6, and bishop c4. So we have an Italian game. And here, black has a couple of choices. He can play knight f6. This is the two knights defense, or the Hungarian defense with bishop e7. Or if uh, someone is uh, really mental, in a good sense, then he can play the Russo gambit with f5. And there are some other gambits too, with uh, knight d4 and so on. In this one, we have the Gioco Piano, the quiet game, with bishop c5. And here, white again has uh, many options, like c3 or short castles. But in this one, we have the Evans Gambit with b4. Now, this is an opening that you don't really see quite often uh, these days. Not because it's a bad opening, because it isn't, but... It's probably out of fashion nowadays, who knows. So here White's idea is that he wants to give up this pawn in order to um, break in the center quickly and also activate some of these pieces. And Black's best choice here is to actually accept this gambit and uh, take the pawn. Now we have c3, bishop a5 and now d4 striking in the center. And here black can take this pawn, but in this one we have d6 defending it. And now we have queen b3 attacking this soft f7 point. We have queen d7 defending. And now after knight d2, we reach the end of the book. And here the main move is bishop b6 with the idea to play knight a5 and uh, pick up that uh, juicy bishop on c4. But Lila had another idea and she went for the other variation and that is to, to take on d4. Now we have c takes on d4 and knight f6 hitting this pawn. The knight is pinned so knight e4 is uh, hanging here. Now it may seem that uh, it is dangerous to take this pawn. For example if white plays bishop b2 Knight e4 looks dangerous because of queen e3 and this knight is pinned and uh, it looks like it will be lost. But actually black can just simply castle here and now white uh, has to be careful here because if it takes this pawn then uh, black traps the queen. So black wins. So knight takes on e4 is a, is a real uh, uh, threat here. <clears throat> so we have now castles on pinning the knight. Castles and now e5 fire attacks in the center and uh, tries to push this knight away from here. But now we have bishop takes on d2. Lila's idea is to, to jump with the knight on e4 if uh, the bishop recaptures. But instead of recapturing, fire took on f6. And now we have knight a5 picking up that bishop, queen c2, and now knight takes on c4. And now if pawn takes here, then uh, Lila can just play rook e8. Instead of that, we have bishop takes on d2, and now we have b5 defending this um, very aggressively placed knight here on, on c4. We have now pawn takes on g7, rook d8, and now bishop g5, rook e8, and now a4, trying to break down this uh, knight's very strong uh, post here on c4. We have first bishop b7 hitting this knight and uh, threatening to uh, destroy white's kingside. We have knight h4 and now bishop e4 hitting the queen and after queen c1 t60 here played an interesting move f6 attacking the bishop but this pawn is not defended and uh, fire could take it but lila gives up this pawn in order to allow her b pawn to advance up the board if bishop takes here then the queen could now defend this knight on c4 with tempo by attacking the bishop and if now white would take on b5 to attack this knight, well, this doesn't work because after queen takes on f6, this knight is also attacked. White can't take back his piece with check. But black has this intermezzo b5 attacking both the queen and knight. And after the queen would take something, 
black wins a, a piece and uh, wins the game. And if instead of uh, eight takes on b5 here, the bishop moves away, then uh, this is what Lila's idea was to, to defend this knight and allow this pawn now to, to move up the board and escape into a, a passed pawn, basically. So bishop takes on f6 is, is not that great. Fire saw that, so he played bishop h6 to defend this pawn. And now we have c6 defending b5, f3 attacking the bishop, and now pawn takes, pawn takes. And in this position, if uh, Fire could somehow uh, get here with the knight to f6, this would be totally awesome for him, but that's not possible. And Fire evaluated this position as completely equal, while Lila already thought that she has a minus 1.1 advantage here. We have now queen f4, the queen is hitting now f6, so how does Lila defend? Well, she just ignored the threat completely and played b4. Go, Bernie, go. Somehow she's uh, not afraid of uh, all these pieces uh, hanging around her king here. The position uh, looks quite dangerous, but it looks like Lila has a, a defensive plan here, or at least uh, that's what uh, she's evaluating here. We have now queen takes on, on f6, and this looks really, really dangerous here. But now we have b3, just pushing the pawn up the board without worrying much. We have now queen g5 hitting this bishop, bishop back. And now rook e1. And we arrived at the critical point uh, of this game where fire thinks that this is equal and Lila thinks she has an advantage. Now if Lila would play here b2, then she would completely ruin her advantage here and she basically would escape only by a miracle here because uh, fire would have here this very strong knight f5 threatening knight e7 nasty check and the best here would be to take out this rook and after rook takes uh, go rook e8 again to to defend this uh, e7 square and now after rook takes and queen takes the knight still gives this check and here the queen is forced to take the knight and uh, luckily for black he can uh, promote a new, to a new queen and now this queen can uh, give some checks and black escapes via perpetual. So as we can see b2 would uh, only be good for a draw. Fire actually expected here rook takes on e1, rook takes and now rook e8, rook takes, queen takes and now since uh, queen e1 is a mating threat, king f2. And here he thought that the best move for black is knight b2 with the idea of giving some check here and then um, try to check also on e1. And here fire intended to play knight f5. And then after knight d3 check, king g3 and queen e1 check, he thought that the game will end uh, with a repetition after knight f2 check, king here and knight back check and so on. So this is why fire estimated this as being equal because he thought the game will end in a repetition. But here, instead of uh, b2 and rook takes on e1, Lila played a surprising move that uh, surprised fire here. He, he wasn't expecting. Knight b6, with this backward going move with the knight, actually wins the game for black. And this is the moment where fire realized that there is uh, something fishy with his position. Because, for example, if knight f5 now, then uh, knight d5. Uh, defends the square on e7 and uh, black doesn't have an immediate uh, threat here in this position and these pawns are, are going up the board so <clears throat> instead of knight f5 he played here g4 and now we have knight d5 still defending here rook takes on e8 rook takes on e8 and now since there's nothing uh, immediate here for white and uh, these pawns are dangerous the queen went back to defend the b2 square and this is now where uh, Lila's advantage becomes obvious if white doesn't have an attack then it's hard to deal with these pawns we have now queen b5 king f2 and now after rook b8 this pawn is really threatening to go in so fire played here queen b2 to stop the pawn at this point they both evaluated this at minus two already we have now a5 and now rook a1 intending to blockade the a pawn here on a3 we have now a4 and king g3 rook a8 and lila is planning here something uh, like this uh, pushing the pawn 
We have now queen a3, but queen b4 still. Of course, if the queen moves away, then uh, then a3 comes and uh, it's game over. We have queen takes, knight takes, and now knight f5, cheekily threatening a, a mate in one here. But of course, Lina noticed that and played here knight d5 to guard the e7 square. And now with all the threats stopped, b2 is uh, really threatening here. So we have bishop c1 to blockade these pawns on these dark squares. We have now rook a6 to defend the pawn. King f2 and now bishop g6 attacking this knight. Knight e3 and now knight f4, a very good move. Intending to play knight d3 check and then uh, taking this uh, bishop after which b2 is uh, pretty much unstoppable. We have bishop a3, but now Lila can give up the b pawn to win the bishop. We have b2, and now the bishop takes. There was no other choice. b1 is guarded by this bishop. We have bishop takes, and now knight d3 check, winning the bishop. And at this point, the game is essentially over. Lila is uh, bishop up in this uh, game, and why doesn't have any compensation really? We have king d2, and now king takes on g7, king c3, knight d3 h4, knight f4, and uh, some more moves. And now here after knight d6, h5, knight c7. Lila is threatening this uh, fork, so we have king b2. And now knight b5 hitting the rook. And at some point, a3 could come. We have rook a7, d5, and now king g8. And uh, we have some more moves. And now after h6, Fire played here rook e3. I'm not sure this is uh, such a great idea because this now allows Lila to exchange the rooks. And uh, without the rooks, Lila has a much easier job now. Here we have rook e8 and the rook can't move because the knight is hanging. So the rook exchange is forced. We have king takes on e8. And now without the rooks, Lila's king uh, can move up the board easily. We have king b2, king f7. And uh, after some more moves, the bishop is coming to b7 to pick up this pawn. And uh, after that, Lila is just uh, picking up the remaining pawns. Here the knight didn't even bother to take this bishop. And uh, now Lila pushes up these pawns. And the game will end very, very soon. Uh, we have some check and then the pawn goes up. And then we have a bishop sack, but fire doesn't want it. Now he takes the bishop, but now the d-pawn becomes a queen. And here Lila gives up a queen, but the knight doesn't take it. We have king b4 and some more moves. And Lila now promotes the a-pawn into a knight. And it looks like she wants to promote the g-pawn also. And there you go, another queen. And then we have a queen sack. And then we have a check, and then we have a knight sack, and then we have the king taking the knight, and very, very soon we have a mate with queen and knight this time. A very nice win by Lila T60. I would like to thank to Pavel Vorkovsky for his donation of $20, and I would also like to thank to Rene, Adolf, Jimmy, and everyone else who donated to my channel. Visit the store. And check out two of my other games on the right. Please subscribe, like and share. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.